The following program contains shocking assertions of truth. If you suffer from relativism, Randall may not be right for you. Check with your local guru. Proclaiming the truth in the highways and byways of the world. Fighting for justice in the dark alleys of politics. Raising the voice of resistance to a fevered pitch. And he knows where to find the best and worst jail food in America. Randall Terry. Hello, friend. This is a special edition of Randall Terry, The Voice of Resistance. The content today is so serious that we are eliminating the beginning part of our program. What you're about to see has literally put the lives of certain men on my staff in jeopardy. We shot this footage today in front of the CARE headquarters, the Council on American Islamic Relations, here in Washington, D.C. As you will see, it was attended by a lot of international press, and what you are going to see, portions of it, will be seen literally by tens of millions of people across the world. Watch it and pray. Pagans say that God is the Messiah, the Son of Mary. The punishment of those who wage war against God and his apostle and strive for mischief through the land, that's when you preach that Jesus is Lord. You're spreading mischief and you're opposing Muhammad. And strive for mischief in the land is this, execution or crucifixion or the cutting off of their hands and feet from opposite sides or exile. This is abominable violence. This is a betrayal of basic human rights. And these are the marching orders directly in the Quran from the mouth of Muhammad, allegedly from God. There we go. All right, we found the passage of peace in here. I thought God gave me so much peace, I should rip it out. Expression? No, absolutely not. If somebody tore pages out of a Bible, I would think that's a bad plan, but I'm perfectly content to let God deal with them on the day of judgment. The difference is that Islam wants to cut your head off and kill you now, because in the Islamic schema, God isn't big enough to defend himself. He needs the steel blades of mere mortals. It's an offense. So will you further denounce passages in the Bible that advocate violence against those who don't protest the name of Jehovah? Jesus, Jesus Christ died to start Christianity. Mohammed killed to start Islam. Well, you have a family, that personal question. Are you afraid it looks like a kind of religious war in the 21st century? What's your personal feeling? In the Islamic world, the world is divided into two parts. Dar al-Harb and Dar al-Islam. Dar al-Harb is the house of war. Dar al-Islam is the house of surrender. We, Americans, are the house of war because we have not bowed our knee and surrendered to Muhammad and Sharia law. The Muslim world is obligated to make war against us and try and extend the boundaries of Islam until it rules the world. We are prepared, if need be, to lay down our lives for the sake of truth, justice, and freedom. If they want to kill us, they can. But our blood will show that their religion is in fact a religion of violence. Most Muslims are good, peaceful, law-abiding people. And guess what? Many of them would convert away from Islam, but they're afraid. They're afraid of what will happen to them because they've seen what has happened to others in Pakistan, in Afghanistan, in Saudi Arabia, in Egypt. The average Muslim is like a Christmas and Easter Christian. I started Arabic studies at the Hebrew University of Jerusalem. I traveled around the Middle East doing research for this. I polled Muslims. I asked them, did you know that Muhammad killed people with his own hand? Less than 20% of the Muslims that I talked to even knew that Muhammad had killed people. Many Muslims don't know their own history. 
But when Nicholas Berg was decapitated, look at the Arabic, look at the translation into English of what that man said before he killed him. He said, and I quote, Allah has left us an example in the blessed prophet Muhammad with the slow cutting of the prisoners' necks at the Battle of Badar. And it is for us a good example. And he bent over and cut off Nicholas Berg's head. Because why? He was following Muhammad's example. And he knew it. So our message is simply this. To care, number one. Care, we ask you to come out and to tell the world plainly that you do not support Sharia law when it calls for the killing of people who either desecrate the Quran or leave Islam for another religion. Tell us plainly. Tell the Muslims around the world that you want them to stop issuing fatwas against us and against Muslims in their own country who leave Islam. And second, we call upon the political and religious leaders of Egypt, Saudi Arabia, Pakistan, Yemen, to lay down Muhammad's sword. Lay down Muhammad's sword. Let people be free to believe what they want, to say what they want, to practice their religion, and to publicly quarrel with another religion. God is big enough. God is not worried. God is not frightened. God is big enough. And if these political leaders are men of honor and men of courage, then they will stop oppressing their own people. The blood of Christians, Jews, polytheists, the blood of non-Muslims has been shed by Muslim Mujahideen for almost 1,400 years. The blame for that goes squarely to those who are doing the killing. We'll be right back with more of the footage from today's press conference. If my cloud has a silver lining, it's only to store electricity for the lightning. Moments with Moses. I will devastate the land so that your enemies who settle in it shall be astonished at it. You may not know it, but just last week, 13 Christians, including a priest, were arrested in Saudi Arabia for practicing their Christianity. I'm going to continue with the press conference we held in front of CARE, seen by millions of people across the world, and then we're going to go to a commercial break. I'll be back after the break. The dialogue revolves right around activity. In other words, the freedom of expression, the freedom of religion includes the right to publicly tear a passage out of the Bible or to burn an American flag or to tear a passage of the Quran. So when Muslims are angry in other countries and they burn an American flag or burn an effigy of George Bush, we might not like it, but we support their right to do it. So we can have a dialogue around these very activities. This is a, an act of political symbolism an act of freedom to bring about the discussion because what we want is for Muslim leaders in the political and the religious realm to say yes under Sharia law and Sharia customs these people should be punished so we want them to step back and say well it's these very actions this very symbolism that people want to be able to do without fear of repercussion if Jesus truly is the Son of God and God the Son, then ultimately what will happen is every person that ever lived will be brought before him and every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And those who have defied him in this life, according to the Christian religion, they will be sent to the lake of fire forever. And so tearing a page out of a book is really small potatoes compared to spending the eternity in the lake of fire. I called, talked to his secretary, Mr. Awad's secretary, sent them the press release, invited them to come out and join us. K 
care could come down here and say, we disagree with what they're doing, but we support their right to do it. And that is what we are after. Randall. Yes. There are more of us out here than there are of you. Yeah. And with the recent threats to burn the Quran in Florida, etc., are you just play, you know, exploiting the media attention that's been garnered around these activities? No. One of the problems that we face in America is that we have no common history and heritage that revolves around Muhammad, the companions of the Islamic prophet. Sharia law is a mystery to us. Most of us have never even heard of the Hadith and the Sunnah. So part of the reason to do this is to step back. I was actually very angry that Pastor Jones was going to do that because I think that he was completely out of his depth. I don't think he understood Islam and Islamic history. And it was a very bad start to a dialogue, in my opinion. I have spent, the, I've spent the, the last, I've spent the last six years studying Islam from primary sources. I have never read a book against Islam. Never. Ibn Ishaq, Ibn Kathir, Al Tabari, Sahih Bukhari. These are the sources for this research. And I determined, even as I considered becoming a Muslim myself, I determined that Islam must be free to speak for itself, with its own terms, with its own vocabulary, and we must take Islam at face value and incorporate the 1400 years of history that are at our disposal to read and to study. Do you echo Jones's message that Islam is of the devil? I'm talking to real journalists today, son. What is that? Today is the anniversary of the Battle of Lepanto. Islam was knocking on the door of Italy. There was a hope that Italy would be invaded, that Rome would be captured, and that St. Peter's Basilica would be turned into a mosque, such as happened with, with, with Hagia Sophia in Constantinople. The Pope gathered basically five nations, gathered a navy led by Don Juan of Austria, and on October the 7th, in what was by all accounts a miraculous victory, the Christian Navy decimated the Muslim Navy on this day, in 1571. So we chose this day because most Americans don't know that if it was not for the Battle of Lepanto, we might all be speaking Arabic. Victory will never be found by taking the line of least resistance. Sir Winston Churchill. If you just joined us, you're watching footage from a press conference we held today in front of the headquarters of the Council on American Islamic Relations. The media that you're seeing were there literally from all over the world. I'll talk to you after the break. Why aren't there more of you here? Oh, we, 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 there's two reasons. We, we put this together quickly and it's the middle of the day. We have to have people that don't have a normal job to go through. You do this for a living, so you, you're able to come here. And the truth of the matter is, there's a lot of Christians and Americans right now that are afraid. They're afraid of the repercussions coming from the peaceful religion of Islam. They're afraid that peace is gonna break out all over. So do you think your views are then representative of other people in America? Say that again? Do you think that your views that you're preaching today are representative oh, yes. of others in America? Oh, absolutely, without, without question. If, if America's national security is threatened, it is threatened by an inherent risk from Sharia law. If we, bow, if we bow our knee on the installment plan to Sharia law in fear, one moment at a time, then we are on a path of political and constitutional suicide. So that means you are not in agreement with uh, Secretary Gates or General Of course Secretary. not, of course not. And shame on them for not having the courage to defend America's constitutional liberties. Shame on them for not having the courage and the integrity to cry out against the injustice that is happening to oppressed minorities that live under the heel of Sharia law. If President Obama and various administration leaders had as much pathos and courage for 
our Constitution and for the rights of oppressed minorities and for international law, we wouldn't be in the mess that we're in right now. Of course, but it is not a constitutional liberty to have people beheaded because they deny that Muhammad is the prophet. An inherent, and this is the point, people, inherent in Islam is the call to death or to slavery for those who deny that Muhammad is the prophet, the last prophet, the seal of the prophets. I'm not willing to give up my Christian faith, nor my liberty to practice it, nor my liberty to say Muhammad is not the seal of the prophets. I mean, you know, for sure in America, nobody is going to, you know, even threaten you with life or, you know, even... That's not true. There so, are people, listen, you, look at what happened with South Park. The creators of South Park right now have to have extra security. And you ought to put that on your show if you're concerned. You must like South Park. The creators of South Park are hiding in fear of their lives because of that cartoon episode. And we're here in America. So we have to put a stop to this now. While we can do so from a position of relative strength. And we need to begin to call on the United Nations to enforce international law regarding human rights. The Universal Declaration, Gary, let me have a copy of that, please. In various United Nations documents, treaties, conventions, to which many Muslim nations have acceded or signed, the UN Declaration for Universal Human Rights says this, everyone has the right of freedom of thought, conscience, and religion. His right includes freedom to change his religion or belief, and freedom either alone or in community with others and in a public or private to manifest his religion or belief in teaching, practice, worship, and observance. Everyone has the right to freedom of opinion and expression. This right includes freedom to hold opinions without interference and to seek, receive, and impart information and ideas through any media and regardless of frontiers. These are the delineated basic human rights to which all human beings should have access and should be able to practice. And because of Sharia law, they are not. We propose that the nations who are a part of the United Nations and have agreed to this document, to the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, we propose that those political leaders simply allow Christians, Jews, polytheists, to practice their religion without fear. May the iniquity of his fathers be remembered before the Lord, and let not the sin of his mother be blotted out. Let them be before the Lord continually, and may his memory be cut off from the earth. For he did not remember to show kindness, but pursued the poor and needy and the brokenhearted to their death. Here's the final segment of our press conference in front of the national headquarters of CARE. Here's CARE's chance to just tell the truth. Thereupon, Mohammed bin Maslama asked to Mohammed, would you like that I kill him? The prophet said, yes. Then bin, bin Maslama said, then allow me to say a false thing. The prophet said, you may do it. In this story, there was a man who was making verses against Muhammad, saying things against Muhammad that Muhammad didn't like. And this, and Muhammad said to this man, th this man said to Muhammad, I have to tell lies about you. I have to tell lies about you. And Muhammad said, go ahead. So what this guy did to lure his victim out was he said, hey, we're having trouble with Muhammad. We really don't like this guy. And he lured this man out of his house. And once he was out of his house, it says, I struck the dagger in his abdomen and pressed down on it to his genitals. 
they fell to the earth dead. This is from Ibn Taymiyyah. Believers should lie to people of the book to protect their lives and religion. I ask you to pray for my staff, for me, for all of us that were there, because we will not back down. If necessary, we will literally lay down our lives in defense of freedom and the truth. God bless you.